Year 7. The Rule of Sankis. Spring, 1057. Today I arrived at the fortress to begin my job as director. The previous director of the fortress has left me quite a nice fortress to work with. It's quite the typical dwarven stronghold. Nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. What the fuck is with this fortress? Sodel M. Goshper. Elephant. Pet of Doran Murlid. What the fuck is with this fortress? After meeting with the former director and hearing all he cared to tell me, the fortress was now in my hands. Since goblin invasions and elephants have been a threat in the past, I plan to rectify it by ordering the construction of a series of channels to release lava into the world. I cancel all the other orders and begins construction immediately. The plan is to bypass the botched area that was done by a previous ruler. I'm also planning on relying on only two floodgates. The pathway I've dug out will do the rest, guiding the lava to the outside and killing whatever threatens us. I scan the surroundings outside. These elephants, if they remain, will be our first target once it's done. Luckily, they do not attack. Suddenly, I receive a report that one of our jewelers, Besmar, has drowned. Unfortunately, I'm unable to recover the body. I suspect he committed suicide. I refocus on the lava channels. While I do so, the yearly elven caravan comes. I look over our supplies and see we're not in need of any goods that they can give us. However, I do order the stills to full activity. Today, however, a true criminal walks free. Eshtan Overbust, jeweler of boat murdered, is released after his jail sentence. He's charged with failing to comply with orders given by the wonderful and generous governor thereby disrupting our glorious capitalist economy. I will keep a close eye on this scum. Any more wrong moves from him and he'll be the first to fight in the upcoming gladiator arena. At this point, I notice my lava project is not being completed quick enough. I give this job high priority. No mining dwarf is to do anything else for the duration of the assignment. It's now first of slate and there have been no more important events. I seem to have spoken too soon. On the ninth of Slate, a horde of mandrills attacked the fortress. The troops arrive in time. A group of Marks dwarves engage the mandrills from a distance, picking several off before engaging in melee. All the while, some dogs that have been stationed outside attack them as well. Soon, however, the battle's over. It is not without loss. One war dog and a Marks dwarf has perished. You will not be forgotten, Eden Ralasesh. On the second of Fell's side, I received word from a messenger that several nobles, along with some immigrants, are due to arrive shortly. Damnation. As if I didn't already have enough to worry about. Prior to the arrival of these immigrants, we had 73 citizens. These immigrants bring us up to 98. With the advent of the Baron, we're in need of royal guards. I go around and appoint the most worthy to the role. Just as things were settling down again, I receive a report that one of my novice miners has been acting strangely and no longer working. Shortly after, I receive word that he's claimed a mason's workshop and will not allow anyone inside. He remains there, babbling to himself. What he wants I do not know, but hopefully he plans something productive. On a related note, I procured the artifact Vodudib for my room. I figure I'm not being paid enough. Why not pad my room with some expensive items? Showing little respect for the dead, the masterwork of Stark Raving Mad has been lost. If I get my hands on the one responsible, they will be killed. Just in time to cheer me up, I learned that the Fade Dwarf mentioned earlier has finally begun construction. Hopefully his item is useful though I have my doubts. Ah, damnation! Just as I expected, this item is nigh useless. A basalt floodgate? You idiot. If I didn't need you, I'd station you in the lava pit. In fact, I may just do that anyway. Zelleringish Usto Suvoth Prime Bodice, the Angry Shred 
This is a basalt floodgate. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with felsite and encircled with bands of basalt and felsite. On the item is an image of a dwarf and an elephant in chrysobarrel. The elephant is striking down the dwarf. Megor Grendel posted, Please post a screenshot of the whole fortress in your next update. It's been a while since anyone's posted one, and I'm desperate to see what's going on. Sank has posted, Yeah, sure thing. Summer, 1057. The summer flood comes early this year. The ingenious series of bridges that a previous ruler made causes us to lose only a dog and a horse. Shortly after the flooding, the human caravans arrive, bringing several wagons. Among the humans is a diplomat. One of our sword dwarves seemed to have gone to great lengths to get a drink of water. Instead of, you know, going to the river edge or a well like a normal dwarf, he wades out into the waters and is now stranded. I hope the idiot dies, but sadly he does not. The diplomat that arrived leaves after speaking to me. We accomplish nothing, and within minutes of him greeting me, he leaves. Meanwhile, I set some idlers to work. My first mission is to get rid of the embarrassing failed aqueduct. I also begin a mass engraving job for the stone engravers. This will increase our wealth greatly. Nothing of importance happens until late summer. Finally, the lava world flood device is finished. Now to test it out. I usher everyone inside and order the lever pulled. It flows. Yes! So far, so good. It passes the aqueduct successfully. It hits the river. I'm just about to release the lava over the river when I look outside. I notice the canals that the previous rulers had done. Extensive canal work. Were I to release the lava into the wild, these would instantly dry up on contact with the lava. Testing it now would be too risky. I'll have to save it, else my test would make the most trafficked portion of the fortress a steamy death trap. Aside from the wounded soldier lying unconscious, starving, and dehydrated in the main hallway, the remainder of the summer remains uneventful. The autumn of 1057 starts with death. Just two days into the season, a jeweler who had been sentenced to three weeks in jail dies of thirst. While I'm elsewhere in the fortress, a fire imp wanders into one of our traps. He never saw it coming. Then I turn back towards the outside. The Mason's Guild leader is injured and knocked unconscious by elephants. They don't seem to finish him off. Then, to make matters better, one of our more skilled metalsmiths is taken by a fey mood. And this fuck better make something decent. He claims a magma forge. Thankfully, we have what he needs for now. Not long after, the dwarven caravan arrives, with the city liaison. While the dwarves are busy offloading their goods, we get a visit from a few goblin snatchers. One is caught and killed in the trap. The other attempts to run. Seconds later, I get a notice that the fey dwarf has begun a construction. I bet it has elephants on it. Then I get another report of goblin thieves. Two more step into the traps. Fucking idiots. Meanwhile, I speak to the liaison about goods for the next caravan. They have nothing to really offer, but more seeds is never a problem, so I ask for them. Just as the mason went out to retrieve the wounded mason's guild noble, a horde of mandrills attack. He tries to fend them off, but is taken down. The mason arrives to find his boss dead, and also begins fighting the mandrills. The mason runs, and the mandrills dart for the trade depot. The caravan's axe dwarves head them off, however, making my deployment useless. Hm. Damn. The mandrills are all killed, and the axe dwarves head back to their caravan. A second later, the metalsmith finishes his artifact. Oh, hey! Fucking elephants! How unpredictable! Archimirtir vunam sub. Racid angles. The lung of dripping. This is a silver amulet. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of silver. On the item is an image of a dwarf and an elephant in silver. The dwarf is making a plaintive gesture. The elephant is striking a menacing pose. We seem to have a bit of a miasma problem, 
so I assign a few dwarves to clean up. What the fuck? Mid-autumn migrants. As if we didn't have enough already. Eh, well, it's only about eight of them. Whoa, out of fucking nowhere, I get a message that Tourette Doge has been struck down. I can't find the body anywhere, though. I search all over for a sign of battle outside, but there is none. With that, autumn is pretty much over. Nothing else of note happens. Dwarves continue being fucking idiots. One jeweler starves to death in jail, and I search for more ore. Tourette Dog posted, Try going to the unit screen, picking the corpse and hitting C, or whatever the zoom to creature key is. That works sometimes. I must be avenged. Sink has posted, I, I tried that, but it didn't work at the time. They somehow retrieved your body, and you're now resting in your tomb. Or you would be if the doors weren't bogged down with a thousand orders. By the way, your tomb pales in comparison to mine. Yours? Mine. That wooden table is an artifact. This is one of the things I made when there was literally nothing happening during early summer to early mid-autumn. Not as awesome as that fully engraved one, but for some reason the good engravers are resting in jail, even though they were never jailed and are dying. Hooray, dwarven justice system! Mariguana posted, No! My werewolf table! My tomb is the cheapest one of them, isn't it? And I bet I died first, too. Winter, 1057. Oh, hooray, winter has finally arrived. The final stretch before my year term is over. It starts off well enough. A metalsmith starves to death. I assume he was jailed for disobeying orders, and none of the lazy-ass dwarves fed him. Our coin vault finally finishes. It contains the fortress's supply of coins. It's protected by first a door of pure steel, followed by one of pure platinum. The late Tourette Doge's corpse is finally placed in his tomb. Since nothing is happening, I decide to set some traps in various areas. I catch a spider. Hooray! Remember when I said that shit was getting boring? I take that back. I have no idea what the fuck just happened. I was cleaning up outside a bit and mining out useless areas when, oh by the gods... Cato Urdemonu Miner cancels dig. Dangerous terrain. Immediately we lose the miner who undug it. Cato Urdemonu Miner has drowned. The rest of those stranded outside are safe. Uh, for now. I get an idea to possibly save the fortress. If I release the lava I have trapped up, it will evaporate the water on contact. With nothing to lose. I do it. The lava is released and hits the water. It continues spreading and steaming up. Sadly, the dwarves trapped outside are unable to flee. They either die horrible deaths due to scalding or due to being buried alive in the lava. Poor dog. The stray war dog, Tame, has been scalded to death. After a while, it clears up. All the goods outside the fortress are burnt, but they can't be recovered. The fortress is saved, but at a terrible cost. After everything settles down, I decide to engrave some things in my future tomb. Clearly, I've suffered some sort of trauma. Igor Shoshil Biban, the old stick of balls. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dog by Sankis Gattenbomrek. The dog is burning. Ralzas Sakub the silvery crystalline dumpling. Engraved on the wall is a masterfully designed image of a dwarf by Sankis Gattenbomrik. The dwarf is screaming. Things began settling down and finally became normal again as winter starts to come to a close. A dwarf becomes possessed. Yay! He claims a craft dwarf workshop. Later he begins production. Winter comes to a close before he completes. I'm now retiring after only a year. Hopefully the next ruler is up to the task of rebuilding the outside and refilling the channels. Luckily I finished my tomb before my reign ended. I now retire. Itzena posted, 
You maniac! You blew it up! Ah, damn you! God damn you all the hell! Did it solve the elephant problem, at least? Sank has posted. You tell me. At least the water flooding slash lava streaming gives the next ruler an excuse to make the fortress's indoor moat into a lava moat. Zaku posted, Deployment of the Lava Death System. This is a masterfully engraved image of elephants and dwarves. The elephants are making a plaintive gesture. The dwarves are pulling the lever.